bless his heart from ours and say, God, you're worthy of our praise. Rumors of the Son of Man Stories of a Savior Holiness with human hands Treasure for the traitor
it's great to see you today at Quail Springs Baptist Church. I want you to take your Bibles, if you have a copy of God's Word, turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Today is Baptism Sunday at Quail Springs, and I'm really excited about that. Praise the Lord for that today. We've got a good number of people who are already scheduled to be baptized in this service, and then there are others who I believe you're listening right now And God has been showing you and God is going to continue to show you today that you need to follow Jesus Christ in believer's baptism. And so I'm praying for people today to come. I'm going to be asking you at the end of this message four questions. I want to ask them right now and then I'll ask them again at the end. First question, have you been saved? Have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? The second question, were you baptized after you were saved. Because a lot of people had their baptism in the wrong order. We'll talk about that as we move along today. Were you baptized after you were saved? That's the scriptural pattern. Get saved, then get baptized. Third question, were you baptized by immersion into water? And we'll talk about that along the way today and why that is so significant. And then a fourth question, really simple, is the Lord leading you to be baptized today? Some people are in this room God has been dealing with your heart about this maybe for a long time. In our first service, we baptized a man who said, he called me the other day. He he, he wanted to talk to me. I talked to him the other day. He said, for over 30 years, God has just been showing me this. He said, I had some apprehension. Some people told me I didn't need to do this. He said, but I know God was leading me to do it. And he got that taken care of before God today. Some of you are here and God is just leading you. The Lord is leading you because you've been saved to be baptized. Today I want to talk to you about how hope wins over our past. And that's what baptism is a picture of. It shows that Jesus Christ has given us victory and and the ability to overcome our past through his death on the cross and his resurrection. And I want to talk to you about how hope wins over our past because so many people live their whole lives chained down to their past. Several years ago, our family took a mission trip to Thailand. And while we were there one afternoon, we took the afternoon off and we went to this elephant show in Thailand. All of the performers in the show were elephants. And it was amazing what they had trained these elephants to do. The elephants could could play baseball, they could play basketball, they could play trombones with their with their uh, their trunks and their you know blow into the trombone and then move it back and forth with their trunks. They one elephant held a paintbrush in his hand and painted pictures of flowers and you could buy the pic- paintings after the show was over. It was better than some paintings I've seen. These elephants could do all kinds of things. But here's something I noticed. When the elephant weren't performing, they had them over to the side and their trainers had the elephants tied up this way. Now, these are huge elephants, 10 feet tall, five and a half ton elephants. Here's how they were tied down with a little bitty wooden peg in the ground, a thin little leather cord, and then a small little collar or cuff around the elephant's leg. And they stayed there and didn't run away. And you could look at it and see that elephant could break that cord or pull up that stake anytime he wanted to. So why did they stay there? and Why didn't they run away? Here's why. Those elephants were all chained to their past. Because when an elephant is a baby elephant, here's how they train them to stay in place. They put a chain around the elephant's foot And then they anchor that chain to a large stake in the ground that that baby elephant can't pull up. In fact, when he tries to pull away from it, that chain begins to tighten up around its foot and it causes enough pain that the elephant just stops trying to escape. And eventually, they don't have to use that chain. They don't have to use the big stake. Just a little bitty spike made out of wood and a little bitty cord made out of leather. And those elephants are chained down by their past. And some people in this room are just like those elephants. You are chained down to something in your past. Maybe the sin of your past, maybe the way somebody mistreated you in the past, maybe the regrets of your past, maybe the pain of your past. You're chained down to your past. Here's the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave to set us free from those chains. 
praise God for that today. And baptism is a picture that we have died to our old life of our past and come alive to a new life in Jesus Christ. That's why there are people in this room today who need to follow Jesus. Listen, last week, revived services were incredible. And one of the most incredible things we experienced was last Sunday morning as Shane Pruitt was preaching. He presented the gospel so clearly and so compellingly. And then at the end, you'll remember, he gave an invitation and asked people to raise their hands. And he asked you to put your hand straight up in the air, extend your elbow and raise your hand. Over 25 people in this room raised their hand to say, yes, I trusted Jesus. Over 25 people raised their hands. We ought to celebrate that right now. Over 25 people raised their hands. Praise God. Praise the Lord for that. Now, not all of those 25 people have taken the next step. In fact, most of you who raised your hands last week, some of you who are here today who raised your hands have not taken the next step of saying, I want to follow Jesus. I want to tell somebody beyond just raising my hand. I want to show that I trusted Jesus. Today's the day to do that, to come forward and say, today I want to be baptized. We've got everything ready for you to be baptized today. I mean, you can come in here not expecting to be baptized. Everything is ready. We've got towels. We've got a change of clothes. We've got hair dryers. We've got everything. We've got things I will not mention so that you can be ready to get back to everything you need. Whatever your question is, I promise you the answer is yes. We've got it ready for you to be baptized. And so you need to come today. Don't put it off. Don't wait. In fact, the Bible is so clear in saying when you get saved, just as soon as you can after you get saved, the Bible shows in the New Testament, as soon as people got saved, they immediately got baptized. You need to do the same thing. I want you to look at your Bibles, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to read verses 14 and 15. I want you to stand with me as we read God's Word together. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. This passage of Scripture shows how Jesus Christ sets us free from our past. The Bible says this, for the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. This is the word of God. Join with me as we pray. Lord God, speak to our hearts today. Lord, show those who need to be saved that today you will save them if they call on the name of Jesus. Lord, show those who need to be baptized how important it is for them to say yes and to say yes today, to come and be baptized today without any further delay. And Lord God, I pray for believers in this room that as we celebrate baptism, that we would celebrate what you have done in our lives by setting us free from our past through Jesus. We'll give you glory and honor and praise for all that you do. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. And church, if you agree with that prayer, will you say amen? Amen. You may be seated. I want you to see in these verses of Scripture we've just read three truths, three results of Jesus Christ having set us free from our past. Here's the first one. Because Jesus has set you free from your past, the love of Jesus motivates all we do. The love of Jesus motivates all we do. Look at the beginning of verse 14. The Bible says, for the love of Christ controls us. The word control there is a very strong word. It means to press into something. It means to hold something close to you because of the love of of Jesus Christ, he compels you, his love presses you, his love motivates you to live a life that pleases him and to obey him. The love of Christ motivates all we do. Everything we do as believers, we should do because Jesus loves us and because we love Jesus. In fact, the language that Paul uses there when he says the love of Christ controls us, he uses deliberately flexible language in talking about the love of Christ. When he says the love of Christ, he can mean the love that Jesus has for us. He can also mean the love that we have for Jesus because the truth is it's both. 
Jesus Christ has loved us. In fact, he's loved us so much that he died on the cross to pay the price for our sins. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says this, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Man, I love that verse. It doesn't say that God says, okay, I love you if you'll go to church five Sundays in a row. That's not what he says. He doesn't say, hey, I love you if you'll start being a better dad or a better mom or a better son or daughter or a better neighbor. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, I love you if you'll you know, turn over a new leaf and do better. That's not what he says. He says, I love you even when you were a sinner. In fact, I love you so much, God says, that Jesus Christ, God's son, died on the cross for your sins. That's why Paul says the love of Christ controls us. He loves you so much that he died for you. Now, now one of the rule of, one rules of any kingdom is that a kingdom always protects the king. You can see that on a chessboard. You know, all the other players can be sacrificed to protect that one player called the king because when the king falls, the game is lost. You can see it on the football field. When the, when the offensive linemen keep that quarterback in the pocket and protect him from the oncoming tackler so that he can get a good look and make his pass. They protect the quarterback because for that moment, he's the king of the team and they protect him because the kingdom protects the king. You can see it with secret service agents who say that they're willing to take a bullet for the president of the United States of America. They're saying they are willing to put themselves in harm's way, even in the dangerous position of deadly gun fire. Why? Because kingdoms protect the king. And that's true of every kingdom until you come to God's kingdom. And in God's kingdom, the king, King Jesus, does not protect himself. Instead, he made himself incredibly vulnerable and he sacrificed himself. He left heaven. He came to earth. He was born in a humble place. He lived a largely hidden life ministering in the area of Galilee. And then he died a humiliating death, the worst type of execution ever devised by human beings. Death on the cross. He died for you. Why? Because he loves you so much. And his love for you and your love for him should compel you to obey him. Everything we do as believers, we do because Jesus loves us and we love Jesus. The first thing he commands us to do as saved people who follow him is to follow him in baptism. Here's what I want you to hear me say. If you haven't been baptized since you've been saved, if you haven't been baptized by immersion into water, then you haven't obeyed Jesus because Jesus commands baptism for all of his followers. And listen, if you won't obey him in something as small as baptism, then there are absolutely other areas of your life where you're being disobedient as well. The Bible says that because of his love for us and our love for him, the love of Jesus motivates everything we do. There's a second result of, of Jesus Christ setting us free from our past. Number two, the Bible says the death of Jesus crucifies our old life of sin. The death of Jesus crucifies our old life of sin. Now look at the end of verse 14. And there Paul writes, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. Now I want you to notice Paul's language here. He says, we have concluded this. He's talking about his faith in Christ. He's talking about the truth of the gospel. And he says, we have concluded this. The word conclude there means to weigh the evidence and to come to a decisive evaluation of that evidence that leads to a decision. We have concluded this. Here's what I want you to hear me say. Jesus Christ doesn't want you simply to hope that you're saved or to think that you might be saved or to wish that you're saved or you, for you to say, well, I think there's a pretty good probability that I'm saved. No, he wants you to know that you know 
that you know that you've been saved. He wants you to know and he wants the people around you to know. One day, if the Lord tarries and I lay my body down in death and, and they have my funeral service, I don't want my son and my daughter-in-law and grandkids if we have them then or my wife or whoever else is there. I don't want anyone to be standing there saying, well, I hope he made it. I hope he's saved. I'm not sure. Listen, my family knows that I know Jesus as my Savior because I know that I know Jesus as my Savior and I show that I know Jesus as my Savior. What about you? Do the people closest to you know that you know Jesus as your Savior? Baptism is a way of showing that we know Jesus and that our old life, who we used to be, has been crucified with Jesus Christ. Look at what it says again in verse 14 at the end. One has died for all. Who's the one who has died? Say it. Jesus. Jesus has died for all. Therefore, and this is something we don't always talk about when we talk about Jesus and his death on the cross. Therefore, all have died. Jesus died for all. Therefore, all, everyone who has trusted in Jesus has died with Jesus. Don't miss this. To be saved means bringing your old sin and your old self to the cross of Calvary and for you to take that place through Jesus Christ. He's dying for you and you place yourself, you place your sin on him so that in a very real way, your old person, your old life, your old who you used to be has been crucified with Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 6, we know, again, language of certainty, we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. I am set free from my past because my old life has been crucified on the cross with Jesus Christ. And once, once, you have died, you can no longer be punished for your sin. So, something happened in the early 2000s. There was a CEO and chairman of a large corporation, and he was charged and tried and then convicted of all kinds of corporate crimes. He was convicted of, of uh, fraud. He was convicted of multiple points of fraud and conspiracy. He was convicted of all of those things, but he never spent one day in prison paying for those crimes. And here's why. After he was tried and convicted, when he was at home awaiting sentencing, he had a heart attack and died. And here's the truth. They don't put dead people in prison. No matter what you've done, they don't put dead people in prison. Now, here's the truth about you and me. All of us have already been tried and convicted of sin. Every one of us. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is what? Death. So in a very real way, if you've never been saved, you already stand convicted by God in God's courts for your sin. And you're just here on earth awaiting sentencing forever. And the sentence for sin is eternal hell, eternal separation from God, eternal judgment and punishment for your sin. That's why the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But here's the good news. Jesus died to pay the price for your sin. And when you trust him as your savior, the Bible says, look at it again, that our old self has been crucified with him. And once you have died with him on that cross, then they don't put people who are already dead in prison for their sin. You don't put someone, you don't punish someone who's already dead for their sin. You come to Jesus and you die, not only to your old sin, but to your old self. That's what baptism is a picture of. That's why immersion into water is so important. You know, when you see somebody get baptized, and we're going to see a number of people get baptized today, but when you see someone get baptized biblically by immersion, and the word baptized in the original language means to dip, to dunk, to plunge. It means to go under the water. When someone is baptized by immersion, it's first of all a picture of death. 
We put them under the water. It's like a burial. We're saying the old sin is dead. The old life is dead. The old person is dead. We have died to our old life, and we show that by being baptized. It's a picture that we are united with Jesus Christ in his death. It's also a picture that one day when we die, we have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Because if you notice, when we baptize people and we put them underneath the water, have you noticed we don't leave them under the water? We put them under the water to show they've died to their old life, but then we bring them up to show there's a new life. That's why immersion in water is so important. It shows that our old self has been crucified with Jesus Christ. But then there's a third result of Jesus Christ having set us free from our past. Number three, the resurrection of Jesus raises us to a new way of life. Now look in verse 15 of 2 Corinthians 5. The Bible says there, and he, Jesus, died for all, that all those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Notice what the Bible says at the beginning of the verse. He, Jesus, died for how many say it? All. Now, if the Bible only said that one time in all of Scripture, that would be enough. But in these two verses, the Bible says it two times. In verse 14, it says, one has died for all, that's Jesus. And then in verse 15, it says, he, Jesus, died for all. All. What does A-L-L mean? It means all. It doesn't just mean that Jesus died for religious people or people who grew up in Christian homes or people who grew up in church. He died for all. He died for people who have followed false religions all their lives. He died for atheists who have spent most of their lives denying that he is God or that God even exists. He died for people who have hang-ups and habits and who are addicted to drugs and, and addicted to alcohol. He died for those people. He died for people with gender identity struggles. He died for every kind of person that there is. He died for all. All means all. It doesn't mean some. It doesn't mean a few it means all. A-L-L spells all. A-L-L also spells Y-O-U. He died for you. He died for boys and girls who are here today. He died for teenagers who are here today. He died for young adults. He died for older people who are here today. He died for every person. He died for you. You say, well, you don't know all the things that that I have in my past. No, I don't, but Jesus does. And he died for you because he loves you. You say, well, you don't, you don't know about all the doubts that I have and how difficult it is for me really to surrender and believe in Jesus. No, I don't, but Jesus does. And he, listen, he is greater than your doubts. And if you just bring those doubts to him, you'll find all the answers in him. He died for you. You say, well, you don't know what I've done to hurt people and the regrets I carry because of that or, or what people have done to hurt me and the pain that I experienced because of that. I, I may not know that, but Jesus does, and he died for you. Look at it again. He died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves but for him who for their sake died and was raised. The resurrection of Jesus raises us to a new kind of life. That's what baptism shows. Baptism shows death to the old life, but then resurrection to a new life in Jesus, that we've been raised to walk and live in a new kind of life. Because he's changed our lives we want to show that we've ch he's changed our lives, and we show that through baptism. I heard a story, it's an old story, about a, a, a woman who was walking through the streets of Paris. And she was dressed up in a beautiful dress, and she had on these long gloves. And she took off, for some reason, she took off one of her gloves. And when she did, the diamond ring that she had on her finger came off her finger as she took off the glove. And when, when it came off, it fell out of the glove into the gutter there in Paris. 
And she looked down and she saw, she couldn't even see it anymore. It sank down into the slime and the filthy water of that gutter. At first she took her umbrella and tried to fish out the the diamond with the handle of her umbrella. That didn't work. And so she did the only thing she could do. She, She sort of pulled up her beautiful dress. She got down on one knee and she took her hand, her clean, delicate, manicured, beautiful hand. And she reached down into the filth and the stench and the slime of that gutter. And she moved that hand around until she found her ring. Why? Because she knew that there was a diamond down there. Jesus left heaven, came to earth, died on the cross, and rose from the grave to reach down into the filth of our sin Because you are more precious to him than all the diamonds and all of the diamond mines in all of the world. He loves you. He wants you to spend eternity with him. And if you love him, showing that you love him, showing that you have died to your old life, showing that you have come alive to a new life in Jesus, baptism shows that. So I ask you those four questions again. Have you been saved? If you've never been saved, today's the day. Don't wait another moment. You're not promised another opportunity, but you are promised today if you call on Jesus, he will save you. Have you been saved? If you're unsaved or unsure today, you need to make sure. In just a moment, I'm going to lead us in a prayer and give you opportunity to ask Jesus to save you. He promises he will. Have you been saved? The second question, were you baptized after you were saved? Only when you are saved are you ready to be baptized. That's the New Testament pattern. Over and over again, you'll see it. People get saved, then they were baptized, and baptized immediately. When I read the book of Acts about people getting saved and baptized, it's like they got saved and immediately, just as quickly as possible, they got baptized. So were you saved after you were baptized? If you were were baptized, I said that wrong. Were you baptized after you were saved? If If you were baptized before you were saved, then you really haven't been scripturally baptized. You need to get your baptism on the right side of your salvation. So if you've been saved, and not baptized since you were saved. Today, you need to come. Third question, were you baptized by immersion in water? Pouring is not baptism. Sprinkling is not baptism, not according to the New Testament. Baptism is going under the water to show that you died to your old life, coming up out of the water to show that you have a new life. Fourth question, is the Lord leading you to be baptized? Some of you are here and you just know that you need to take this step to show that you follow Jesus. And God's been dealing with your heart. God's dealing with your heart right now. Sometimes people will say, well, pastor, if baptism is a symbol, if it doesn't save us, is it really a big deal? And I would say to you, baptism is a symbol, but it's not just a symbol. I have on my hand a gold band that my wife, Michelle, gave me on the day we got married. It's a symbol. This gold band does not make me married. I can take it off, still married. I'm going to put it on real quick. quick. But anyway, (laughs) still married. It's a symbol. But I think you would agree with me, it's not just a symbol. If on the day of our marriage, when Michelle offered to put this ring on my hand, I made a fist and said, I'm not comfortable putting that on. You tell me, would there have been a problem? The answer is yes, there would have been a problem. Or if if I were getting ready to go out of town and I told Michelle, you know what? I think I'm going to take my wedding ring off my finger. I'm going out of town by myself for a few days. I'm going to take my wedding ring off. Would there be a problem? Yes. It's a symbol But it's not just a symbol. Now, the wedding band is a man-made symbol. Baptism is a God-given symbol. It's a symbol. It doesn't save you. But it's not just a symbol. 
If you've been saved and you truly ask Jesus to save you, then you need to be baptized. And you need to be baptized scripturally. That means you need to be baptized after salvation by immersion into water to show that you've trusted Jesus as your Savior. Some of you today need to say yes to Jesus and everything is ready. Bow your heads and close your eyes all across this room. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'm gonna ask for ministers and others to be here at the front. And they're coming, we've got people who are ready to help you follow Jesus by being baptized. We've got change of clothes, we've got hair dryers, we've got everything. There's nothing to keep you from doing that today. You need to do it. There are boys and girls today who need to come today because you know that you, you trusted Jesus and you want to follow him by being baptized. And listen, for boys and girls, we may not baptize you today, but we will schedule today for you to be baptized in upcoming weeks. And so you need to come. Moms and dads, boys and girls, come. I'm, I'm letting you know, though, for boys and girls, we may not baptize you today, but we will schedule today for you to be baptized in the days to come. We just want to make sure we talk to you and, and, and that you understand the decision you've made. But you need to come. Boys and girls today need to come. There are teenagers who today need to come and follow Jesus by being baptized. I can think of one teenage boy in our church. He followed Jesus by being baptized. And, and soon after that time, he came under really intense fire because of his faith in Jesus. And one of the things he said was that he went back and watched his baptism video because it encouraged him in his relationship with Jesus Christ just to know he had followed Jesus by being baptized. There, there are teenagers who today need to come and be baptized. There are young adults who today need to come and follow Jesus by being baptized. There are men and women. Some of you have been in church for a long time. And you've got all kinds of excuses that you've offered for why you haven't been saved or why you haven't followed Jesus by being baptized. And today's the day to put those excuses behind you. Those excuses are like a chain to your past. Just break free from that. Jesus died and rose so that he could set you free. Today you need to say yes. Freedom comes when you say yes to Jesus. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, Today, if you are unsaved or unsure about your salvation, I want to invite you right now to pray with me. You can pray a simple prayer with me. You just pray it in your heart and mean it in your heart. And the Bible promises everyone who calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. So right now, you can pray this prayer with me if you need to be saved. Pray this way. Dear Jesus, I believe you are God's son. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. Jesus, right now I turn from my sin and I trust in you to save me. Give me your gift of eternal life, Jesus. Save me right now. And Jesus, I will follow you. And Jesus, I will show I follow you by coming forward today and either being baptized today or scheduling to get baptized in the immediate days to come. Jesus, I will follow you you. For Jesus, I pray this in your name. If you prayed that prayer with me just as soon as we stand up in a moment, I'm inviting you to step out of your seat, walk down one of these aisles, tell one of the people here at the front, I prayed that prayer. We want to talk to you more and help you take your next steps. And if you're ready, we're ready to baptize you. Unless it's a boy or a girl, we may need to talk to you further. But, but if, you're a, if you're a teenager, if you're a man or a woman, you come today, we're ready to baptize you today. Others of you are here, Last week, you raised your hand. You put your hand right up in the air. You may have looked at Shane. You may have stood up, but you know you haven't taken that next step. Today, you need to come. Today, you need to come. Don't put it off. Come and be baptized. Come and be baptized. Some of you are here, and you know your baptism is on the wrong side of your salvation, or you were baptized by some other way than immersion into water, and today, you need to get that right before God. You come. Father in heaven, we give this time to you. We pray, God, that you would use this time and bless it in Jesus' name. I pray for boys and girls to come. I pray for teenagers to come. I pray for men and women to come. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's stand to our feet. As we stand and as we sing, you come. If you pray that prayer with me, you come. If you want to come and be baptized, you come.
And then there are others who need to come and just pray for somebody in your life who you know and care about who needs to be saved. These altars are open. You come. You come as we sing together. Let's sing together. I would be hopeless without your goodness. I would be desperate without your love. Slave to the darkness if it wasn't for the cross. church we're going to enter into a time of baptism y'all can have a seat right now and i would encourage you as as you see people get baptized church family let's celebrate with them okay can you do that y'all direct your attention up amen church family we are so excited to celebrate a brand new believer this is atticus Camerunus, and he has prayed and asked jesus to forgive his sins and so atticus let me ask you have you asked Jesus to be the boss of your life? Yes. Very good. I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in new life. Let me introduce to you another brand new believer. This is Charlotte Camerunas, and today is her birthday and her baptism day. Isn't that special? So excited for you, Charlotte. 
Charlotte prayed and asked Jesus to forgive her sins, and she wants to make that public to you today. And so, Charlotte, have you asked Jesus to be the boss of your life? Very good. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in new life. Oh, this is an exciting day. Let me introduce to you another brand new believer. And we're very excited. Her mom and dad are right over here. This is Ree Molly. And Ree came in to visit with me and she prayed and turned her life over to Jesus, asking him to forgive her sins. And she comes today to show you that she has made that decision. And so Ree, have you asked Jesus to be the boss of your life? Very good. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, raised to walk in new life. <laughs> I went from the tallest down to little Joy, and she is a Joy. This is Joy Anya, and she is a brand new believer. Church family, isn't that exciting? Yes, it is. <clears throat> Joy prayed and asked Jesus to forgive her sins, and she wants today to come and show you that decision she's made publicly. So, Joy, have you asked Jesus to be the boss of your life? Yes. Amen. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in new life. Amen, church. I'm going to ask you to stand back to your feet. We're going to continue on. We're going to sing just for a little bit, give people time to get ready to be baptized. And I just want to encourage you that you haven't missed your opportunity. If God is stirring in your heart right now, then listen to him. Let's have a conversation about it. There's ministers that are ready to talk you through that. And if you need a voice, if you need words to say, then we're going to sing this chorus together. It just says, God, I need you. And maybe that's the voice you need. To, those are the words you need to sing and say today. Say, God, I need you to save me. I need to be baptized. I need to be obedient to you. So as we sing, you lift up your voice with us. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you. of ages I'm standing on your faithfulness on your faithfulness oh God my God I need you oh God my God I need you now how I need you now oh rock oh rock of ages
church. Y'all can have a seat. Let's continue to celebrate in baptism today. This is Rachel Olson. And Rachel grew up in church. And for the last five years, she's been here at Quell Springs Baptist Church, sitting right down here in the front row where her family's sitting uh, today. And about a year ago, the Lord really started moving and working in her life and convicting her of if she was if he was truly the Lord of her life. And this past Tuesday night, she was at home watching one of the revived services when Dr. Rummage was preaching. And she put her faith in Jesus for the first time and repented of her sin and said, I want to follow him. She came the next night and said, I put my faith in Jesus and I need to be baptized. And she said, when she did that, amen. And, and when she did that, she described the joy and the freedom that she felt by being obedient to the things that the Lord has called her to do. So Rachel, what's your profession of faith? Jesus is the Lord. Amen, and will you follow him all the days of your life? Yes. And then it's on that profession of faith that I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We're buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in new life. That way you don't have any like, what are we doing? I think most of the time people want to just get stiff. Saved several years ago at Falls Creek and he has learned what baptism is and the Lord's been growing him. But he said, I want to be baptized. I want to proclaim that before everybody. So Keegan, I have two questions for you. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. And do you vow to walk faithfully with him for the rest of your life? Yes, sir. Then my brother, it's my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bear with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in the newness of life. Amen. Julie, find this way. Be careful that step. Just turn around this way. Turn around this way and just sit right down. Church family, this is Julie Brown. Julie, have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? Yes, I have. And do you desire to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. And upon your profession of faith in Christ, and in obedience to our Lord's command, it's my privilege and my great honor to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. We praise the Lord for you, Julie. God bless you. Good. Be careful, be careful. This is Valeria Rodriguez. She's a seventh grader at Cooper Middle School and her family's been invited by another family at Quail and she had been saved, but she wants to proclaim that through baptism to you this morning. So Valeria, I have two questions for you. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And do you vow to walk faithfully with him for the rest of your life? Then my sister, it's my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bear with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in the newness of life. Congratulations. Amen, church. I'm going to ask you to stand one more time. We're going to make some time for those who are getting ready to be baptized, to get baptized. We've had so many come forward already. If you are stirred to do that, then come on back. We've still got time. Let's sing together and worship. lost and all alone your presence was where I found home you were there and you're here right now in every high and every low you never left me without hope you were good He's been faithful. How we miss your faithfulness. I've seen you breathe life within. So I pour out my praise and give you worthy. God, you're worthy of all the good. Your promises never fail. I've got stories I live to tell. Pour out my praise and give your worthy. 
Praise the Lord. Church family, you may be seated. This is Catherine Peak, and uh, Catherine and her husband have been attending here at Quell Springs for some time, and today both of them came saying they want to follow Jesus Christ by being baptized. Catherine, have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. And do you desire to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. And upon your profession of faith in Christ and in obedience to our Lord's command, it's my privilege and my honor to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. We praise God for you, Catherine. God bless you. God bless you. You stand right here and watch me. Church family, this is Catherine's husband, Zach. Zach, have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? Yes, sir. And you desire to follow him all the days of your life? I do. And upon your profession of faith in Christ and in obedience to our Lord's command, it's my privilege and my honor to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. We praise God for you, Zach. God bless you, man. Amen. This is Brody Hitchcock. He's a senior at Deer Creek High School. And Brody, I got two questions for you. Amen. Have you trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. And do you vow to walk faithfully with him for the rest of your lives? Then it's my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in the newness of life. Say your name again. family. This is Gabby Edge. Gabby, I'm thankful to see you today. Have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? Yes, sir. And do you desire to follow him all the days of your life? Yes, sir. But upon your profession of faith in Christ and in obedience to our Lord's command, it's my privilege and my honor to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're buried with Christ in baptism, 
raised to walk in newness of life. We praise God for you, Gabby. God bless you. Be careful. This is Brad Lonis. Brad, I have two questions. Have you trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. And do you vow to walk faithfully with him for the rest of your life? Yes, sir. Then it's my honor and my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bear with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life. Church family, this is Garrett Draper. Gary, have you trusted, Garrett, have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? And you desire to follow him all the days of your life. But upon your profession of faith in Christ and in obedience to our Lord's command, it's my privilege and honor to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. We praise God for you, Garrett. God bless you, man. This is Lily Ketch. She's a freshman at class in SAS. And Lily, have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And do you vow to walk faithfully with him for the rest of your life? Yes. Then it's my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in the newness of life. Church family, this is Jillian. She came forward today trusted Jesus as your Savior, and uh, you're following Him, and you want to follow Him all the days of your life. And upon your profession of faith in Christ, and in obedience to our Lord's command, it's my privilege and my great honor to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. We praise God for you. God bless you. Be careful. Be careful. You keep, I want you to keep this just as saying that right, Brother Greg? And uh, Greg came forward this morning. He told me, he said, I prayed that prayer. And he said, I want to get baptized. He came here today not expecting to get baptized. He's coming today to follow Jesus. Gregory, if you trusted Jesus as your Savior, and you desire to follow him all the days of your life, then upon your profession of faith in Christ, and in obedience to our Lord's command, it's my privilege and my honor to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. We praise God for you, Greg. God bless you. Church family, I'm so excited to get to introduce to you a brand new believer. This is Avery Vaughn, and she has made this decision earlier and has been waiting until she was a little more brave to face the water. And here she is, isn't that exciting? She's chosen to be baptized today. So proud of you, Avery. So you've prayed and asked Jesus to forgive your sins. Is Jesus the boss of your life? Amen. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in new life. <laughs> it can be slippery. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dex. Stand up right here. Let me introduce you. I want to introduce you to a brand new believer. This is Dax Dean. So proud of him for coming this morning to say, I want to be baptized. That's awesome. So, Dax, have you prayed and asked Jesus to forgive your sin and turn your life over to him? 
great. Well, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in new life. This is Christy uh, Watson, and she comes today to say, I, I need to get my baptism on the right side of my salvation. She prayed and asked Jesus to forgive her sins, and today she wants to proclaim to you that decision to follow Christ and to be baptized. I'm so proud of you. Uh, so if you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, yes. amen. Well, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in new life. You did it. Amen. Hey, church family, we had the opportunity to see two brothers follow Jesus Christ in baptism today, and I'm excited about that. This is Ivan Ontiveros. Ivan, how old are you, son? Good. How old are you? 11 years old. Have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? And do you desire to follow Him all the days of your life? Then upon your profession of faith in Christ and in obedience to our Lord's command, it's my privilege and my honor to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. We praise God for you, man. God bless you, Ivan. Come on. All right, here comes brother. All right, this is Anthony. Anthony, how old are you? Seven, eight. eight years old. Man, I was eight years old for a whole year one time. You want to take off your glasses? You want to leave them on? You do whatever you want. It's your glasses. It's your baptism. You do what you want to do. Have a seat. Have a seat. Here we go. Good. Anthony, have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? And do you desire to follow Him all the days of your life? That upon your profession of faith in Christ and in obedience to our Lord's command, it's my privilege and my honor to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. We praise God for you, son. God bless you. That's awesome. celebrate that we have a living hope in Jesus. It's been awesome to be here this morning and see God at work. Y'all sing with us. It's been a great, great day in the Lord's house. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, I want to remind you, if this is your first time with us, or if you have not yet come by our welcome desk, we would love for you to come by. We are so thankful that God has brought you to Quail Springs today. We've got a gift that we'd love to give you. That gift includes a book that I wrote that I'd love to have uh, to be able to put in your hands. And we'd also just love to be able to meet you personally and tell you how thankful we are that you are here. Also, there's a prayer card in the seat back in front of you. Let us know how we can pray for you, how we can pray for your family. 
you can put those prayer cards and there's also a place where you can register as a guest. You can put those, put those prayer cards in the black boxes on the way out. That's where we give our tithes and offerings here at Quail Springs Baptist Church. I'm going to ask for Dr. Kelly King to come. She's got some words for us before we are dismissed. But it's been a great, great day in the Lord's house. Kelly, I thank God for you. Come on All up. Right. All right, let's do it. All right, hang with me just for a couple of minutes. I know that we are just, what a, it's kind of like air traffic control back there. Little chaos, but in the best sort of way, right? And so what an incredible morning. We're so excited for today and what is happening here and all the things that are happening at Quell Springs. Just a couple of things. It is time now if you have someone that is at VBS age or even going to camp this summer, uh, registrations are now open. So you can go to qsbc.org slash events. You can find out all the information there. We also need a few more people to help us in VBS. And this is a great way to serve our church and serve our children. And so definitely you wanna check that out. Women, we've got some women's Bible studies this summer. Over 20 homes are opening, 20 women have opened their homes to do the study when you pray. And so you can go to qsbc.org. You can go to the women's page. You will find the links there of all the homes. They are at different times during the week. They are um, different days of the week. And so that's going to be happening this summer. We would love to have you. If you're not getting the women's newsletter, the email newsletter, several of you have contacted me, you can also sign up if you go to that page as well. Again, we are so thankful that you have been here today. Again, if you want to meet the pastor and his wife, Michelle, out in the Welcome Center, we would love for you to do that. There's the Connect card in the back of their pew as well. All right, tonight we have business meeting. We'd love to see you back there, here tonight at 530. Good night. We'll see you.